Some kind of service tunnel. I'm on the other side. Just keep going. You're almost to the colony. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? It's Alexander Hilly123 here. And it is time for the penultimate chapter of my Callisto Protocol Contagion difficulty post commentary walkthrough. Never gets easier saying that as you'd expect. Holy shit, it's a mouthful. We just picked up shitloads of street cred and a pristine CPU printer. We know shit's getting made, you know. And as you can see, this chapter is not as long as the ones that have come before it. But there's some important fights in this chapter. A few dangerous ones. Let's see what happens. A few two head fights as well, I do believe. And the way that I fight the two heads. From now till the end of the game is by cowardly just running away and shooting. And a lot of people face the two head and just strafe left and right and shoot him. Obviously that looks cool. The reason I don't do that is because, like I've already said you know, many times, in the midst of this walkthrough, I don't trust the game's gameplay. The game's very heavy, it's very jank. The game will also spawn at the next two head fight an enemy. A normal shit munching enemy like this. And if you're strafing left and right, trying to avoid one of these guys. Not one of the blind enemies, one one of the ones that can see you. Um then and you know the two head is in very close proximity to you, you will just be killed immediately in the cutscene. So it is nerve-wracking, and I'm running away like a little punk bitch, but I do not care, because this game's gameplay is not very... It's not great, you know. It's serviceable, it's, in a way, it's kind of fun, but it's not exactly game-changing, it's not incredible. And yet again, just like the last chapter, we're stealth-killing these guys once more, and I just don't think that... This was necessary. This is a little kind of hub area, ladies and gentlemen. We will come back here later on. And when we do come back here for the second time, it ended up not being that bad, but it was one of the parts where I was kind of worried because it's kind of like a choke point part and moment where they all know where you are for some strange reason. I don't know why. But they're running at you as soon as you come into the room and you're meant to just run up those ladders down there and get back to where Danny is and yeah it's a bit nerve wracking it ends up being okay and I had some GRP in my inventory at the time so I just threw a few of them in the spikes and then ran on and then a few of them spawn upstairs and I just threw them off the edge yeeted them out of the area and made my moves because from now to the end of the game on hardcore you're going to start needing to buy a lot more ammo here Yeah, on hardcore you do, in the second half of the game, have to buy ammo to survive. Which is even more difficult because you want to upgrade on other things, but you, you struggle to do so. Not so much on Contagion. I'm just glad I didn't bring this to the channel on max security, because max security, the gameplay would have been better. Yeah, definitely it would have. But... There's two difficulties harder than max security at the end of the day, and I'm glad that I've done Contagion, even though it's taken me a bit longer to do so, and there's been a bit of frustration, but I'm content now. It's like, yeah, I've done I've con done Contagion, brought it to the channel. And in the midst of doing this, I've been constantly talking about the differences of other difficulties and helping people on Hardcore. A little bit. You can't help fully. <laughs> You've got to play it for yourself and go through the madness. But you have a look at the percentages. The percentages on PlayStation tend to be higher than they are on Xbox, but the very low percentages showcase that not many people have played this at all. But oh, he's going back in there. Fair enough. Don't forget that this is a paid DLC. So what did the devs expect? What would anybody expect? Only ultra-hardcore survival horror fans and ultra-hardcore fans of the game are 
probably going to get this and pay for it. So that crossed my mind when I did this project as well because Mac security, I'll put it in the tags of the YouTube video and this will help anybody who also wants to play that difficulty for the first time or needs a guide for it. But yeah, that will always happen. Um, oh, hey, oh. Look at that. Nice QTE for no reason. Okay. But when you go in that bathroom and you pick up the schematic, you'll always be attacked. I don't know what he was doing there. They've come from, obviously, the downstairs location. Bit of dead space action here. They're going through the vents. Kind of. <laughs> but yeah, they came from the downstairs area. So just be careful. Like I said in the prior chapter, by now I'm getting a little bit peeved with this stealth gameplay because it's just very formulaic. These enemies are very dull. And just so you guys know, I did mention, you know, I died four times doing this. Two times I died to the insta-kill um, at the end of the lost chapter. And then there were two deaths to the two heads. One in this chapter and then one in the last chapter. Both due to jank. We'll speak about that when we get there. Let's let this guy come past. Give him a shank in. Ladies and gentlemen, the game's going to screw us over here. It's always on rails. It's meant to happen. As we pick up 14 street cred. There's going to be a bit of a crash there. They're going to fall down. Piece of rubble. Just keep walking straight ahead and you have the time to stealth kill him. And then his mate. He doesn't tend to hear when you do that. So that's nice. In that room there as well, ahead of us, there are the little crawlers. I think I have a little look in, see them, and then think, yeah, fuck this shit, I'm out. Don't forget you can use the GRP on those things. Now as you head back into this little room here, be ready to hold the right button. Keep pressing it, keep pressing it, and dodge. And just smash that motherfucker on the ground. But we're ready to get out of here. I did once have a bug, ladies and gentlemen, where this little elevator just did not appear. If that happens on Contagion, you're loading the save back up. Enjoy. So these three will spawn at this point. And I'm hunting them down and getting the loot. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, this elevator here. There's also a nasty fight coming up, and there's a moment where... I don't know what is best to do to avoid... Because you kind of get sandwiched between the enemies, and I've not seen a strategy which you could potentially employ to keep yourself safe. Coming up really soon, we'll speak about it then. But this guy here, he's always mutating as you go around the corner. And at least on this difficulty, he drops a pristine energy converter so he can mutate all he wants. Small amounts of street cred. What is this, hardcore? And... You've got to time this perfectly. I've fucked this up before. Thankfully, I didn't hear, so this is kind of cool to see. I've also had him come to the side that we're on before going in there, so he'll, he'll kind of not properly see us, but he'll go to our direction. He didn't there. And we managed to just go behind him and stealth kill him. But here, look, look at my level of patience now. It's like, I know, because I've played this game before, I know... Going after this guy, it's not going to work, but I do it anyway. 
So don't do that, obviously, guys. But it's just because I'm like, I can't be arsed waiting. We're going to need to sharpen our bloody shiv soon, ladies and gentlemen. Been doing that much shanking with it. No, halfway into the chapter now. Yeah, what I'd do is drop that explosive there. That alter ego, as I've been calling him during this playthrough. He will always just run past. He's on rails. Apologies if you heard my guts there, ladies and gentlemen. First video in a while without mentioning the guts, but this is a different play session. What have I had for tea today to make the guts grumble? Um, some salmon and crew. It's like salmon and pastry with cheese, some potatoes and broccoli. Tell you what, decent meal. Like this more for going for a two-hit combo. See that guy in the distance there, and we're gonna pick the explosive up. We're gonna. Kill the alter ego and then back up. I would lift this guy up and just yeet him off because, as you can see, there's an exploder there. Imagine if I was engaging in fisticuffs with that guy. The exploder would damage you during fighting. He's a fat enemy, and I think to myself, he could drop some loot. And I think to myself, he could drop some loot. What a wonderful world indeed. But incredibly, our inventory is full. This is hard to believe. Pick up the pristine. But coming up here is the area where you are sandwiched in between two alter egos. It doesn't go incredibly well, but give me your thoughts, guys. What would you do here? Maybe I'm meant to turn around, but then the one in front of me is going to get me. Because look, alter ego, I pick that up accidentally, and then the one from behind has spat on it. Throw him out. And then try and throw him out and look what's happened again. Oh, look, he's just clipped against something. Jank. Fuck off, game. Jesus Christ. So whatever. He's going to drop something good. Nice random QTE, which sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't happen. And the consequences for the QTEs happening are that you take a decent amount of damage. What is that? Yet again, 15, 20% health lost. Because of the random QTE. I'm running out of here because I'm pissed off. But yeah, that part there, guys. Not sure what you can do. If you have the, um, the the tank. It's like a white tank thing, isn't it? Throw that first at the alter ego. So the one in front of you stumble. And then throw him off. But the one behind you. He puked on me. I lost a tiny bit of health. Maybe that's why my health was already lost, not the QT. I don't know, but it's a bit messy, that. And then I tried to throw him off of the game. Wasn't having it. Ah, we're going back for some resources. Yeah, if you lose or you miss out on some resources here, your inventory's full. Which I wasn't expecting my inventory to be full here. Well, there's another 100 credits. And free hand cannon ammo. We'd be fools to turn that down. But this is it. This is the two-head fight. This is where I died on the prior attempt, the first attempt, because I tried to turn back right at the start of the fight. And I ran against the thing that's there. I don't know what it is. And you don't really have a more... He's right in front of you. And you need to make sure that you're running in the right place here. It's like two o'clock. It's kind of upwards, but to the right. That's where you want to go. And start fighting the two-head and the enemy. Normal shit muncher's gonna come in. You gotta be careful of him. If you've got boom bullets, use the boom bullets immediately and get him out of the equation. But as you can see, we just upgraded the baton to the max. Pain to the max. We also purchased the assault rifle, so needless to say, massive upgrades. If you're playing on easy, normal, hard, you're probably gonna have nearly double than what I, even I had there, so... You can get some really good shit. 
So we've got 20 bullets in the assault rifle. I don't think I do anything else with the assault rifle. And for whatever reason here, I decide to just take the aim assist off. Yes, I have had aim assist on. Trust me, guys, if you're thinking, this guy's a cheat, blah, blah, blah. You've never played this game before. The aim assist doesn't really matter on this game. I would argue that I miss more shots with the aim assist on than having it off. I, I don't know. <laughs> But it's, this game is not a shooter. It's not a shooter. So the aim assist doesn't matter. I just didn't want it off. I didn't want it on. Because. I want to be as accurate as possible with the. the I don't know. The two head enemy. And yeah. Whatever. <laughs> so I was nervous here. Because I'd already died. It's just some fucking stupid jank. Let's see. I should be moving to the right here. Not, you see what I mean? Look at that. Fucking hell. Dodge straight away. And he's fast during this fight. And I'm not standing there. Look at the jank. The geometry. Uh, the level design is just done in such a way that you're meant to get lost. You're meant to be manically and in a panic state running away from him. That's the, that's the fight. Like I said, the fight... Is can you handle the jank, ladies and gentlemen? Let's blast him. But I'm waiting for the shit munching enemy to turn up, and there he is. Because if he catches up to you, you're probably going to die. Oh, I was ready to dodge there, obviously, but. Nearly ran against the wall. He's finally fucked off. And now he's in the faster phase, the second phase. I think I mentioned it during the first two head fight. Did I? I can't remember. But, oh no I didn't. I'll be mentioning it later actually. About mantling through the open windows. If you do do that, and I'm going to do it now. Then just be aware you've got to time it right there. Because if you do that too late, he will kill you. Whilst you're doing it, you'll go into a cutscene. The game doesn't care that you're going through the window. You will die. Oh, watch this. Oh my god, this shit muncher. I got a little bit angry when that happened, ladies and gentlemen. Ain't gonna lie. I know he's close to dying now. I know a lot of the Ultra MLG Callisto Protocol... Fanboys will not like this technique of running away like a bitch, but it's just got to be done, I'm afraid. There we have it. He's dead. Piss off. And the incredible thing is we've got to fight him two more times. One in this little server room, which is the worst of them all, where it's just really smoky and hard to see him. And yet again, that's the boss fight. That's the mechanic. Can you handle the smoky jank? You've handled the jank in this area. And then there's a fight where you are at the start of the game. There's loads of growth on the floor. Jacob will just sometimes just walk really slowly during random parts of the floor. Can you handle the jank there? But these enemies made of ash here. There's some story reason that they are all made of ash. Kind of reminds me of uh, Gears of War 3. I seem to remember. That was a sick game, man. Make Gears great again. But actually, no, don't. Just make new games. <laughs> that was the last game. great game in that series. 4 and 5 I had fun with, to be fair. But there's just something missing. Weird. Damn. More evil with an influence there, ladies and gentlemen. With the stem. So, I've not even mentioned him. Ferris. The guy who plays Deacon St. John in Days Gone. Hey, that rhymes. 
We're going to fight him again. And if you were wondering, upgrading your baton will end the fight quicker. That is something that is true. If your baton is upgraded, you're going to be fighting him for longer. Obviously, you're just hitting him. If you've got the checkpoints, you're probably not going to be that worried. But I hate those 50 cuff kind of fights. You know, the un end of Uncharted 4, the ones that are in Last of Us 2. I know this game is based on melee combat, but those fights in particular piss me off. And sometimes you'll go into a QTE against the Ferris Wheel. That's what I'm going to call him. Uh, Officer F Ferris Wheel. And I don't know why. But the first fight with him goes absolutely immaculately. You do get a quick snap option after fighting him. Or during fighting him, I should say. But... You don't have to hit him with your guns. If you're on hardcore, I hate to say it, guys. It's probably best you don't shoot him. But if you do shoot him, you're probably going to end it faster. But this is it. This is what I said before. I was really nervous about. Got to find a ladder. And the enemies here know where you are. They will drop in on you. And I, at first, I here, I thought, oh, they're not coming down. And then they do. And then this is the guy who already knows where you are. And you know I'm deadly serious here. Because I'm not even picking up the loot. And I think, okay, let's get for the ladder. And then another one drops. And that's when I'm like, yeah. I mean, that's three enemies killed there. And then there's two more. I remembered this. I think there's a bit of typical Callisto jank, is there? Yep, yeah, there you go. That's par for the course, ladies and gentlemen. Par for the fucking course. We know that by now with this game. And we are through. There's, we killed five of them there. There's more of them. I would do what I did. That's nerve-wracking, though. And they all know where you are, and that's the worst thing, because it's bullshit. And I'm sick of the bullshit. Let me just change my position here. Yeah. What have we gone for there? Is that... Yeah, I think it's four more bullets in the... Riot gun. So now we can blast off four more shots before needing to reload. And I think there's a conductor or some shit here and I'm just going to get it and then just go straight back. During the Ferris wheel fight coming up, there is some loot in the area. I would say don't focus on it, don't get distracted, just keep dodging him. I'm not 100% sure, but I think he either goes in for a 4 or a 5 hit combo every time. And it's quite intense, and he's making these loud roar, roar noises as he's trying to hit you. Can be a bit intimidating at first, and when you're doing your first hardcore or contagion playthrough, especially contagion when you're shitting yourself. But um, nah, it's not that bad. But you've got to do another fisticuff fight with uh, Sergeant Officer Ferris Wheel, whatever his name is. Again, just before the final boss. And I just like to hit him with the riot gun. You are able to hit him with any gun. But when the quick snap option comes up, I like to hit him with the riot gun. We do have our baton fully upgraded now. And if you're worried about the fisticuff fights ending your run, maybe you too want to have your shit upgraded. Exactly the same. Because in the past... I don't know, man. I've had it with these fights. They're so simplistic mechanically, but... I've taken damage and it's like, I can't understand why. And it happens during, not this first fight, I think I do it perfectly. There's two QTEs you can kind of go into. One damages you and another doesn't. I'm sure that's the case. It doesn't sound right, but you know what this game's like by now. It's, mechanics are friggin' stupid. A bullet inside the motherfucking dome. Caitlin Bala. But here we have it. I know that it's all over after this. Just got the Ferris wheel fight to come. And like I say, I think this one goes absolutely perfectly. You're in this one for the long haul if you're on hardcore. If not, it's going to win quicker. Is that free? Oh, only free. Okay. So just make sure you don't attack him before his combo ends. Hit him with the bat on there and then hit him with the gun. Okay. Okay. 
Joker. Let's keep mashing the the left and the log stick. Oh, I'm against the wall. Look at that. Ooh, I don't like that. See how Jacob was positioned against the wall. No, I'm not liking that shit. Oh, he's actually only sometimes going in for a free hit combo. Maybe it's just before the final boss. There you go. I think that one's on rails. Yeah. Sometimes he can do that and it's not the end of the fight and you take damage. But I don't think that forced us to take damage. But there we have it. Thank Christ that's over because I hate those fights. And we do take damage just before the final boss. And I can't remember as to why because I didn't do anything differently. But welcome to the Jank Protocol, motherfuckers. I think there's one or two more bits and bobs, some street cred, a few upgrades. Oh, there's a reforge. Between now and the end of the game, I can't remember what we upgrade. I did say it at the start of this chapter, if you're on hardcore, then you're probably just going to be going for bullets here. Even if you're trying not to use your gun, because that's the way that the difficulty is is made it, it, it's done these difficulties should not have been paid dlc obviously you should have just been able to play them for free it's an absolute aberration it's an absolute outrage but you know i'm somebody stupid who thought i'd pay for it and i don't mean to call you guys stupid it's just we're all being exploited these days in the gaming industry You know, they also put a dismemberment mode in the game for people who want to one-hit kill all the enemies. That wasn't a paid DLC, that was free. For the hardcore survival horror fans who want a harder experience, they've got to pay for it. Oh, um, we're going back to our cell. And I'll see you guys for the final video. Which is called... Tower.